Let's talk a bit more now about the life and legacy of Valérie Giscard d'Estaing uh, with Paul Smith. He is a professor of Francophone studies at the University of Nottingham. Good afternoon to you, sir. Thank you very much for being with us. Good afternoon. Uh, let me ask you first of all, you know, Giscard, he was technically a politician of the centre right, but I think to today, to many people, it's, they sound like distinctly liberal policies, you know, making divorce easier, legalising abortion, uh, passing laws towards equal pay for women. Do you think those are the policies that he will be most remembered for? I certainly, I think those are the policies he would most like to be remembered for, for the, the progressive uh, ideas that he brought to, to fruition through reforms in, uh, as your reporter said, particularly the early years of his presidency. He talked about the idea of a progressive liberal society in France, and he really wanted to uh, to build, I mean, what, what I see in, in Giscard is actually uh, carrying forward some of the ideas that come out of May 68 and, and pushing those ideas forward to, to create an advanced liberal society in France. Let's talk about Europe, though, because we know, as we heard in that report, he was really um, the, a, a key proponent of European integration. But this, this has been a really tough few years of Europe. Brexit is a mere few weeks away. How do you think he would view the current uh, relationship the UK has with Europe? Well, I think he he would have absolutely deplored it that that it was um, you know it's an, a terrible thing to have happen. I mean, certainly his view was uh, was he was certainly a very strong Europeanist. I mean, that's one of the, the ways in which he do, he he fell out with the Gaullists. That's one of the reasons he wasn't a Gaullist. He never was a Gaullist during the 1960s. He was very much in favour of the idea of drawing Europe closer together, kind of pulling away from the Gaullist vision of uh, of the European future. You mentioned. His relationship with Schmidt, and so the his idea of a of a closer and closer union, um, which is based on his own family experience and the experience of France during the Second World War, was kind of his his vision of 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 building something that would avoid conflict, that would smooth over the differences between uh, between the European states, not just France and Germany, but of course everybody who was involved in that project. So certainly he. He was deeply uh, disappointed by the, the vote of the, uh, the British to leave the European Union. So that's how he may be perceived in Britain. And it is very fair to say, I understand, that he was not a figure without controversy in other parts of the world, specifically in parts of Africa. There was that whole scandal regarding uh, diamonds from the then president of the Central African Republic. What do you think his legacy will be in Africa? Well, insofar as he's remembered, let's rem it's a long time since he was president, nearly 40 years, but the, what he really does in Africa is to take the presidency to Africa. Remember that France has enormous number of former colonies in Africa. The policies that he's pursuing are really a continuity, are really a continuation of what de Gaulle, to some extent Pompidou, had pursued. But what he does is that he goes to Africa, he visits African leaders, he is... Uh, very much uh, what the French call l'Africain. That doesn't mean he's from Africa, but he's a politician who wants to promote that idea of Africa. And he uses Africa. He sees Africa as being the way that France uh, plays a central role in international movements in the world. France's relationship with Africa. And this is something that's, that's carried on by his uh, his successors, Mitterrand and Chirac, pick up on the Giscardian tradition of being a French president who goes to, who visits, who tours, who meets with, with African leaders, but not just Francophone Africa, also other states, not, not just the former colonies, but other states in, in Africa as well, so that France becomes... He, he wants to position France as a privileged interlocutor for, for, for Africa in the, in the world. So it's, it's, it's a slightly sort of post-colonial, neo-colonial position, but that's, that's his legacy, is that tradition, which we've seen die out rather over the last few years, but certainly he leaves that tradition behind him, to, left behind him to, to both Mitterrand and to Chirac, his immediate successors. Paul Smith, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you very much indeed for talking to us for a little bit about your perspective on uh, Valérie Giscard d'Estaing, who has died uh, at the age of 94. Well, let's move on uh, for you now.